Rails 2.2 was just released, and with it comes a flurry of new features. So over the next several episodes, I would like to cover some of these features. But before I get into that, I had a little bit of trouble upgrading to Rails 2.2, so let me show you some of the steps I took. So installing the new version of Rails is pretty easy, just to gem install Rails to get it. But this latest version of Rails requires RubyGems version 1.3.1, and I didn't have that, so I had to upgrade RubyGems. So what I did is Ruby gem, gem update system, and that failed for me. I got an error message. So if that happens for you, you might want to try running this other command. Gem install Ruby gems update. And then you can just run the update Ruby gems command to uh, actually update uh, Ruby gems manually instead of going through the usual, usual uh, command. And once that's done, you can check your version and make sure you have the latest one installed. And then finally, don't forget to change the Rails gem version in your environment file to 2.2.2, uh, which is the latest version, uh, or whichever version you want your Rails app to run on. So now that we have Rails 2.2 working, let me kick this series off by showing you a nice little addition called memoization. So let's say we have a method like this file size method here, which does some kind of complex, expensive operation. So in this case, I'm just going to sleep for a couple seconds so we can see this effect, and then I just return some calculated value. Well, what if we want to improve the performance and cache this value somehow? Well, one way to do this is using the technique I showed in the very first episode of using or equals. So we could say, um, let's rename this method to calculate file size, and make another file size method, and then store it in an instance variable. So we could say file size or equals the calculate file size value. So now the first time we call file size, it'll run this calculation, store it in the instance variable. The second time we run it, it'll re just return the value in the instance variable. So let's try this out in the console and see how it works. All right, we can fetch a product and then call file size on this. The first time it takes a couple seconds, then the next time it's instant because we cached it. So for the most part, that works well and is pretty simple. But what if this calculate method returns nil or false? Then this won't work because the instance variable won't hold a true value, and therefore it'll calculate it every single time. Well, Rails 2.2 gives us an alternative way to do this called memoization, and it has some other advantages too. So the first thing we need to do is include the behavior because it's not included by, by default. Just call extend and then active support memoizable. And then in here, instead of having this second method here, we'll just have the one file size method and just call uh, memoize file size. And then that gives us basically that same behavior again where we fetch a product, um, call file size on it. And then the first time it takes a couple seconds, but after that, it's nice and speedy. So what other advantages does this memoize give us? Well, here's where it gets kind of cool. What if this file size method accepted an argument? Maybe it defaults to one, and then we just multiply, just have that in our calculation somehow, where the value that's returned changes depending on what the argument is given. All right, so if we fetch another product, then we can call file size on this again, but pass an argument. And this will again take the two seconds to recalculate it, but if we pass that same argument again, it will be fast because it's cached it. But if we change the argument, then it will reevaluate it again, and it remembers each argument, the value of each. So this is a nice way to cache um, the returned value of methods uh, based on the arguments passed. Lastly, if you want to just reload the cache and clear it, you could just pass true as a last argument here, and that will force it to um, actually call the method. Well, that wraps up this episode. As you can see, memoization is a nice alternative to that or equals solution I showed in the very first Rails cast episode. Um, so if you ever need to cache the return value of a method, especially if any kind of arguments are involved, you might want to give memoization a try. Um, I should mention and clarify that the cached value does not is not stored across requests. So this is only really valuable if you end up calling file size multiple times on a given Rails request because it's only stored in the specific product instance in this case. Uh, the next request, it'll be a different product instance, so the cache isn't carried across. 
This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.